Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio in the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is a opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, and enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those of you joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. We have another great show ready for you, so let's get started. Grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and it's time to start improving your profitability. Today we have with us a very special guest, Ms. Sherry Howell. Sherry is the Brand Engagement Director for Center Edge Software, where she provides operational best practices and tools to help family entertainment centers like yours improve their profitability. Sherry has over 12 years experience training in the US and abroad and is a great friend to the bowling industry. She's facilitated sessions here at the Bowling University Management School and spoken at various state shows around the country. Today, Sherry's gonna be discussing the secret to guest loyalty, how reward programs and memberships can help improve your profitability. Sherry, thank you for spending a few minutes with us today. Good morning, great to see you and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I sure miss you guys and wish we could be together that I could be in the studio with you, but um, I'm really excited to be part of this today. Um, when I think about loyalty, uh, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but rewards programs and membership programs and subscriptions are everywhere now. You can get a um, rewards program for your groceries, for makeup, for, um, you know, uh, lots of memberships for things like meat and vegetables. I mean, just everywhere. We are living in a membership economy. Um, and I think that that is something that when you think about customer loyalty and driving that loyalty, if you can tap into the membership economy, you're going to be more successful. And really, if you think about it, bowling has been involved in this membership economy for a long time, right? You guys have had um, a captive audience of league bowlers for you know for years, and um, and I think that now is the time to really think about okay, who else, and what other groups can we tap into to drive customer loyalty. And so um, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a story and, um, you know, kind of what got me started thinking about driving customer loyalty and, and getting the benefits um, of those loyalty programs and what they offer you. And there are many benefits. The benefit of increased revenue and profitability, you know, customers that visit more often, um, people that engage with you, people that want to give you feedback on your programs. I mean, there's so many benefits to loyalty programs and memberships. And I call those um, relationship type programs and I'll kind of use them somewhat interchangeably. Um, but to start with the story, um, so I love to travel. It's my absolute favorite thing. And when I travel, I like to go to, um, you know, the local coffee shops so that I can, you know, support a local business and also get some of that local color. Um, and I was at a conference, gosh, it seems like a lifetime ago now, but um, I was at a conference and, uh, and the morning of um, the, the session, I decided that I was gonna go for coffee. And um, that particular day, I actually walked another couple of blocks past the local coffee shop that I normally, normally would go to in order to stop at Starbucks. And I waited in a really long line um, at Starbucks and why do you suppose I took that opportunity to go to Starbucks instead of going to that local business? And the reason um, is because I've already, I had already put more money onto my app. So I kind of spent the money and kind of budgeted already. Um, and I was a few stars short of my next incentive. And so I really wanted to get that next incentive. So I went outside, you know, what my norm would be to visit the local shop to go to Starbucks. And so why did I really do that? I did it because Starbucks understand what makes you loyal and what drives customer behavior. And so that's it, right? And if we can build programs that tap into customer loyalty, that taps into all of the things that make people loyal, um, 
then I think we're going to be successful. And you might have noticed on the first slide, it said it's not just about service anymore. And I know that you're probably cringing, thinking, what do you mean it's not, it's not about service? Um, but I think that guest service and great guest service really are the rules of the game nowadays. Nobody's really gonna be loyal to a brand that is terrible. Um, but I feel like all other things equal, guest service is is not enough of a draw anymore, that there are so many other things that make you loyal that it's time to start tapping into those things. And even, even guest service, if you think about it, I mean, some of us are loyal to um, retail chains that are known for being um, low on guest service. And we do that because there are other factors that drive loyalty. So let's talk about those. Oh, to be fair, do not think I'm telling you not to have great service because that is a given, non-negotiable, but not just that. Um, okay, so thinking about what drives guest loyalty. And so um, you think about all the membership programs, those relationship programs, memberships and subscriptions and um, loyalty programs that you're involved in now. What makes you engage with those more than others? So like in the, um, like in a gym membership, in, in the first picture here, in, in a gym membership, what makes you get up and go and actually visit the gym? Well, it's probably because you're committed, right? You're committed to yourself um, and you're committed to the investment that you already paid. If I pay for it, I will go, right? Like that's what happened with me and Starbucks say, I had already put money down, I was already invested. So that drove my loyalty that day. Um, another another reason is for the perks and the benefits, right? That that free coffee, that um, that incentive for doing something, for engaging, um, that's another driver of loyalty. Um, having special treatment, right? Maybe it's a VIP line. Maybe it's a special, you know, special merchandise that you can buy. Maybe it's um, just that, hey, welcome VIP. Maybe it's emails that you receive, that feeling that, wow, I'm part of something that treats me um, really uniquely. And then, of course, savings and kickbacks, right? Those, um, those are great drivers of loyalty, you know, getting um, rewarded for behaviors that we do. Those can really, you know, uh, make a guest or a customer sticky to your brand. And then, you know, the feeling of exclusivity that I'm part of a special group that not everybody's a part of. You know, this is how Apple has built, you know, a multi-billion dollar brand is by tapping into that feeling of exclusivity that pe people, some people especially, want. And then finally, um, you know, an, a, a program that's easy to understand, like uh, Hotels.com, that's the example here in the photo, um, because it's easy to understand. You know that after after 10 um, behaviors, you get something. So it's very easy to understand. A lot of hotel uh, programs, loyalty programs, don't do that well right now. Um, you're, ne you're never really sure what you're getting points for or how they work or when they're going to add up and what you can use them for. And that complexity, that overcomplication, makes it so the hotels.com can come in and really carve out a lot of their market. So the point here is that I think and I believe that any relationship type program that you offer, any membership, subscription, loyalty, rewards program has to tap into some of these other drivers of loyalty. And that if you can do that successfully, you will have a better chance of reaping some of those benefits, the increased revenue, the recurring revenue stream in the case of memberships, and just that overall brand loyalty that we all want. And so now you're like, okay, well, all right, maybe we're sold. What do we do now? Where should we start? And so I'm very data driven and I feel like you should be also. So definitely start with the data. Get your, um, you know, your visit frequency. How often are guests coming? You need to know what they are spending on their visit. And then also it makes sense to look at over time, you know, what the relationship has been worth you know, monetarily um, in terms of, you know, what the annual spend might look like. And that will help you if you want to build like a monthly membership program, knowing what a guest spends over a year's time so that you can figure out how to um, boost that. 
And then of course, your most popular attractions and offerings so that you know what to include in your, in your programs or what to include as benefits or incentives in, um, in a loyalty program. Um, and you can find all those. I hope you are um, you are tying your and, and associating your transactions at your point of sale to a guest profile. Um, you can do that if you already have a loyalty program as part of your facility management software, or if you have um, guests register their game cards. That's another another place that um, that you can you know figure out. Okay. If John Smith is coming, what's John Smith spending? What is John Smith in, engaging with? And um, you know, how long is he spending? What's he buying? And those kinds of things. Um, and then, of course, you know, sales transaction reports. If you're not tracking um, it at the guest level, like at the name level, then you can look at sales transaction reports to get a feeling of what um, of what some of these key data points might be. But I will say this, if you are not currently tracking um, who's buying what, right? If you're not currently associating transactions with your, um, with your individual guests, I think you should start there. And I think that it makes sense for you to just implement a, an easy to understand basic loyalty rewards program that rewards guests for um, purchases and visits uh, you know, awards and points that you, they can redeem for rewards, um, you know, on future visits. I think you should start there because what that's going to do is it will give you their data, their information, their data, um, their contact information that then they, you know, you'll be able to um, test things out on them. You'll be able to um, start to learn their behaviors and understand what is compelling for them what are they doing in your in your facility and what do you want them to do next? Um, because a lot of programs fail by not driving new consumer behavior and that's what you need to what you need to know what they're doing now so that you can drive new consumer behavior. Um, so how might this look? So um, I put up three different program types here and listen, you could start with just a you know, the basic one, you could start with the, the top one or you can do a mix of, of any of these. The key is um, to start engaging more with your guests because that's gonna drive loyalty. So the first one is general, re general rewards program that I've got on the screen. Um, that's that basic loyalty. It's free to join. The only thing it costs your guests is their information, their you know email, text, you know mobile phone number, um, address, that kind of thing, demographics, and maybe you offer some tiered earnings. So after a hundred dollars, maybe I go from earning one point per dollar to earning one point five point per dollar, um, and then I can redeem them for merchandise, experiences, products, discounts, or whatever later on. Um, and then you can send me some personal offers in that. It's low commitment, it's no cost, and it's you showing some loyalty to your guest and they'll, they'll start to show loyalty to you. Um, from there, I think, okay, let's go into like a um, kind of a mid-tier uh, approach. So I call this one kind of a low level membership. It's got a low, maybe a one time cost of entry, maybe a $20, $25, whatever. It, that's um, not important, but it's got a low cost of entry. And then maybe this drops you into a higher earning. So instead of starting at at one point per dollar, maybe I'm automatically going to start earning 1.5 points per dollar. Um, and then it's got its own set of tiers and more personalized offers. Because remember, you're getting their data, you're able to personalize offers and marketing for them. And then maybe you start to give them some members only benefits. Maybe it's a 10% discount on games, or maybe it's you know a discount on a birthday party or or something like that. Um, but as you can see, as your level of commitment and what you're willing to give your guest increases, the level of commitment that you require from them also increases. And then you get to this um, 
this top one, this VIP member rewards. And don't name them these. These are just for simplicity's sake. May, name them something compelling and exciting that, that they're going to want to buy from you. So the third one, this VIP member rewards, let's think of this like a monthly membership. It's got a low cost of entry, um, but it's got a monthly fee. And this is going to give you the highest earnings to start you as the guest. Um, it's got its own tiers. It will have the best offers, the best bonuses, the best incentives, and maybe even early access to some specials or promotions or gift card sales um, or whatever you might, you might um, want to give out. And so, and you can see that they're committed because they're paying, um, you know, they're paying monthly and they're, they're showing you their loyalty and you're, you're returning that loyalty by giving them the best of, of everything. And so I hope this kind of, you know, helps you see how um, a program might look and, you know, where you might want to tap into your guest loyalty next. But the most important thing is that you are finding a way to engage more with your guests to find out what they like, to give them and sell them more of that. Um, and then that that's gonna drive loyalty and you're gonna get the revenue and the benefits and the recurring streams um, that, you, that you and your business wants and needs, especially in a time like this. Um, so, like I said, if you have not um, started capturing guest data at the guest level, start there. And maybe you want to, um, track that for a couple of months. At, at Bull Expo, I'm gonna be diving in a whole lot deeper into all of this. And so maybe you wanna bring your data to the, to the session and you can share you know, your ideas, your questions during or after that session. And we'll talk more about building those loyalty programs, how they might be failing you, how to roll them out. Um, and the like. So um, I hope this gives you a little something to go on. At this point, if you do nothing else other than start using that customer data to build more compelling offers uh, and marketing for your guests, you're automatically going to start increasing um, your revenue. So if nothing else, that should, that should boost those profits. Um, that's all for me. Bart, I'll turn it back over to you. No, oh, thank you, Sherry. Great information, a lot to digest there, and we have a great opportunity to visit with you in, in <laughs> June there. Um, and I think, uh, folks, I, you know, coming out of COVID, this is even more important that we engage with these guests and start these type of programs. So I hope you'll uh, take to heart what Sherry shared with you. So Sherry, I'm going to sneak in one question here real quick, because I love how you explain the why in that. So what really is your favorite coffee? <laughs> it's this little coffee shop in Boston called Blue State Coffee, and every time you go, they give you a little wooden nickel that you go and put it into a, um, a, a, a bowl for the charity that you want your dollars to support. And at the end of the month, this um, coffee shop will donate to the various charities. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, very cool. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for, for being with us there. So thank you to you and the Center Edge folks for allowing you to be with us here. So great news, folks. If you'd like to learn even more about this topic, uh, Sherry will be one of our featured speakers here at the upcoming Bowl Expo in Louisville this June. Sherry's 90-minute learning lab will be taking place on June 22nd at 2.30 in the afternoon, and you are not going to want to miss it. As we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember that when your focus is growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to uh, seeing you next week at 10.15 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If uh, you have any questions at all about today's show or anything in general, I'd like to talk to Sherry, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next week.